Papua New Guinea can be a wild tribal land, but this is not the remote highlands. It's a university campus in the capital, Port Moresby. And the aftermath of a student-led protest against corruption that went terribly wrong. My name is Christopher Kipalan, and I'm from the island of Papua New Guinea, in Enga province. I'm painting my body, I'm painting my face to show that uh, I'm still in the mooring house where I will not attend to any classes. A few days earlier, police had fired on a group of unarmed students at PNG's biggest university. No one died, but at least eight people were hospitalised with gunshot wounds. These guys are all from Enga, one of the Highlands provinces. Uh, and it's two Engans who had suffered some of the worst injuries in the shooting. This is their cultural ritual. This is how they show their outrage at what was done to the other students. My name is Tracy Ponak. I'm from Aigam in Enga province. And I'm uh, finally a law student at UPNG. I'm doing this is because the Prime Minister is not respecting and upholding the integrity of the office of the Prime Minister and also he didn't allow the police to investigate him and question him. So he's not respecting the law, he thinks he's above the law. For weeks, students have refused to attend class despite pressure from the university to resume their studies. Today, this group is marching around the campus, imploring classmates to hold their nerve. Wednesday, June the 8th, the morning of the shooting. The protest starts peacefully enough. Students are demanding Prime Minister Peter O'Neill step aside and allow police to interview him about corruption allegations. Most dress up expecting to go to Parliament and express their views to the nation's leaders. Move, move, Chris, move. But when they try to leave the campus, heavily armed police are waiting. We wanted to do a peaceful protest to the Parliament. We weren't harmed, to, we, we didn't even carry any gun or stone stick or whatever. We just raised our hand and we were unarmed. You don't know what is going on in this country. We are fighting on behalf of you. There's a standoff. Then, Port Moresby's police chief tries to arrest the president of the Student Representative Council, Kenneth Rapa. The students rush forward to protect their president. The police respond with tear gas and then live ammunition. Some students flee across a field behind the university and then seek sanctuary in a nearby settlement, one of the poorer parts of Port Moresby. They say police follow them in. While we were running into the bush, they were shooting us. And they were like uh, hunters looking for an uh, animal. As police comb the settlement, students back at the university set fire to a truck to create a diversion, hoping, they say, to help their friends escape. Running for their life. It works. 
but police responding to the burning truck fire more shots and one student is hit in the head. The news filters back to parliament. I am told uh, that uh, there has been some shots fired but also some tear gets unconfirmed reports coming through. They are students, they are future national leaders. You oh, shut them out. Is that a reputation of question? Shut up! Peter O'Neill came to power five years ago in unusual circumstances. The Prime Minister at the time was Sir Michael Samare, considered the father of independence and one of Papua New Guinea's grand chiefs. My health is as good as any. I'm old enough to be a 40-year-old again. But Sir Michael spent months in Singapore receiving medical treatment. Peter O'Neill gained the support of MPs and made his move. A vote here in Parliament gave him the top job. But Sir Michael fought back, and for a while, Papua New Guinea had two men claiming to be Prime Minister. I'm the Prime Minister of the country. Uh, and uh, and uh, Somara is trying to hijack it with some hooligan policemen. The Supreme Court ruled in favour of Sir Michael, but the Parliament stuck with Mr O'Neill. Part of Peter O'Neill's appeal was his strong anti-corruption stance. He set up an investigative body called Task Force Sweep, and it was widely applauded for rooting out corruption. My name is uh, Sam Poim, and um, I am the chairman of Investigation Task Force Sweep. We've arrested uh, well over 90 people and charged them and uh, a number of people are in jail, including the former minister for uh, national planning. The higher up the uh, corruption, legislative corruption, uh, political corruption, and this uh, is a corruption that is uh, depriving our people at the grandest scale. But two years ago, the task force Peter O'Neill created turned its sights on him. It alleged he authorised a $30 million fraudulent payment from the finance department to a law firm. The evidence was overwhelming for us to mount a case against the Prime Minister. Peter O'Neill denied the accusations, saying his signature had been forged. When anti-corruption police issued a warrant for his arrest, Mr O'Neill obtained court orders preventing police from arresting him. He sacked the Attorney General and the Police Commissioner and he tried to disband Task Force Sweep, but that was overturned in court. And what's happened since June 2014 when you sought to arrest the Prime Minister? Well, it's, uh, it's now two years uh, since we did that. Uh, we served the arrest warrant on the Prime Minister we gave him two hours and that two hours uh, has been extended to two years now. Uh, nobody is above the law. Everybody is subject to the law. I have exercised my constitutional right that I can challenge the issues that the police are taking on board. If we claim to be a democratic country on the one end and on the other end, we do not observe the fundamentals that make up a democracy, then we don't have a democracy. When you suppress all of that and when you tamper with all of that, what you are doing is you are brewing up popular discontentment, which is a recipe for revolution. It's bound to explode. Since the shooting at the university, Student Council President Kenneth Rapper has been on the run. His lawyer takes us to his safe house in Port Moresby. Is President inside? He's inside? She's no big blood thing. It's hey. not a big blood. Oh. <laughs> nice to see you. If the police can shoot the students on site, then just imagine other people. They will not hesitate to kill me, uh, my student leaders. So in fear of uh, 
me, me being shot by uh, you know other parties and even the police. Surrounded by supporters, Kenneth Rapa explains what he says is driving the student protests. We have nothing against uh, Honourable Peter O'Neill or anyone on that matter. All, what the students are saying is we are fighting for our office, the office of the 8 million people. It's about guiding the democracy that this nation has. As his lawyer discusses his prospects, there's a reminder of the dangers of Port Moresby. Uh, what means good for Kenneth? Yeah. Oh, God. What was the noise? Oh, that was a gunshot. We don't know. It's police or uh, some criminal elements. We're not sure. But there was a gunshot from a high powered gun. I don't think it's a homemade. <laughs> the gunshot, just a few hundred metres away, goes almost unnoticed by most of the party. You have to go home. They finish their food, pray, and then Kenneth slips off into the night. It's two days after the shooting at the university. The most seriously injured students have been brought here to Port Moresby General Hospital. Maddie Max Rex, better known as Mad Max, was filming the protest and says a policeman tried to grab his camera. They tried to escape, he pulled the stem of the camera. So we were struggling. He pulled the stem, I pulled the camera. And uh, in the process, he punched me. He punched me, he slapped me. I got a bullet at the back and it ran away to the stomach. So, when I was unconscious, I lost the camera, but I managed to pull out the memory card. Stephen Likas was shot later in the day, near the burning truck. Is, is the bullet out or still in? Uh, yesterday, I went to operation and the doctor so I sexually removed the pellets. His mother, Krista, flew in from remote Enga province to be at his side. As we leave the hospital, another visitor arrives, Student Council President Kenneth Rapa, venturing out of hiding. What are you doing here today? Can you tell me about it? I'm visiting my boys. Who are you visiting? The boys that got shot last time. Uh, doing a first visit today. How are you feeling? Scared, terrified, worried, sad. What are you going to tell them? Be strong. And of course, get their kids back into classes. Both the Prime Minister and Police Commissioner declined the ABC's requests for interviews. But in public statements, the Prime Minister claimed the students had been incited to protest by the opposition. Uh, it has uh, come to light that uh, this confrontation was uh, unnecessary. Uh, it could have been uh, handled a bit better uh, by, of course, uh, not allowing these sort of con confrontations to take place. Uh, unfortunately, there are certain uh, elements within the student group uh, influenced by outsiders, uh, obviously with their self-interest, but particularly uh, political interest, who have been visiting students on many occasions. What the government is saying is an insult to the intellectual generation of this country. We are not being pushed by anybody or dictated by anybody. We are doing it because of the knowledge that we have. We know, we understand.
we will conduct our own internal investigations and inquiry as to the nature of the injuries that have been sustained by the students and those uh, members of the public. Part of the investigations will also include the conduct of the SRC president and the members of the SRC at the university. The university is in lockdown. The police guarding the campus deny the shootings even happened. Yeah, nobody shot anybody. Nobody shot anybody. Straightforward. We just used uh, gas to disperse the student. That's all. Just gas. Just so gas. Where do the gunshot wounds come from? Who knows? Guns are everywhere in this country. <laughs> Police in PNG have a reputation for brutality. From excessive force and trigger-happy raids to bare-knuckle fight clubs and bizarre punishments for suspected offenders, the Royal Papua New Guinea Constabulary has become widely feared. We're, we're, we're just not scared of the rascal anymore. We're scared of the police. Australia gives more than half a billion dollars in aid each year to PNG, and the Australian Federal Police has 70 officers here providing training and support. Just one week after the students were shot, the AFP officially handed over a million dollars worth of housing to the police. But not just to any police, to the same division involved in the shooting. first Sunday after the shooting, and Father Victor Roach wants to address the issue in his sermon at Port Moresby St Joseph's Church. We are sorry, as most of you are sorry at the situation that we are in. So many students were shot and wounded. We are very sorry at the situation. Thank God that nobody is dead. Hey. About 30% of Papua New Guineans are Catholic, making the church the largest denomination in this staunchly Christian country. So no, no, no revenge. So the country's Catholic bishops say the allegations of corruption need to be resolved. We do not want an escalation of this violence. We are afraid uh, that if they are not dealt with now, it will go, it will go more and more and there will be further escalation of violence. And that's what the Catholic Church would appeal to the leaders, that there should be wisdom that prevails. The best known parishioner at St Joseph's is Papua New Guinea's founding prime minister, Sir Michael Samare, the man Peter O'Neill ousted. He's waiting for you. Father Roach takes us to meet him. Sir Michael says Peter O'Neill should step aside and allow the corruption allegations to be dealt with. People feel that the government is corrupt. And if it's corrupt, the man on the top should give himself in and say, OK, come and find out what's happening. He doesn't have to resign as a prime minister, step aside as a prime minister, allow acting prime minister to run the show while he's answering questions. Get the commander of the police to step aside get the police team together and tell them these are the kind of things you do, you know. You cause aggravation, you cause uh, people to revolt. Provoking, you don't provoke them. Talk to them nicely. And they have well-educated kids, they'll go back and think about it, yeah. In the days after the bloodshed, a small group of influential women offer to act as mediators between the police and the students. They gather in the capital to hold a traditional mourning ceremony or house cry. Think of our students who were hurt 
and he said, on the 8th of June last week, we are a violent society. We must acknowledge that. We have domestic violence. We have sorcery. We have tribal fights. We have shootings. We have police brutality. We have all that. We cannot be quiet anymore. The women say they're politically neutral. But to prevent further violence, they want the Prime Minister to deal with the corruption allegations. Right now, he needs to regain the trust and the respect of the country. And the women are calling for that. You know, we want him to, to realise that before he's a Prime Minister, he's a human being. And he's a son of Papua New Guinea. And he came from a mother. And so he needs to respect our wishes. There's no such unity among the students. After the shooting, the University of PNG is closed. The Vice-Chancellor calls for classes to resume, ratcheting up the tension between the students who want to get back to their studies and those determined to maintain the boycott. They want Prime Minister Pitaunu to step aside as soon as possible. He steps aside, class, classes will continue. boycott triggers clashes between students across the country. In Ley, a student is killed by other students, though the reasons for the attack remain disputed. In Port Moresby, the university eventually decides to abandon the academic year, declaring the campus unsafe. The rule of law has been replaced by mob rule, intimidation, harassment and violence. The learning environment has been turned into a tribal war zone with painted faces, war cries, knife welding persons. Eventually the students disperse, returning home, their education on hold. In the weeks following the shootings, opposition against Peter O'Neill continues to grow. A pilot strike grounded domestic and international flights. As for the student marches who triggered this political crisis, many are now dispersed to settlements and villages across the country. <laughs> Stephen Likas has left hospital and is recovering at a relative's house, his mother still by his side. More details emerge about the shooting. Why did the police shoot you? They shot me because, you know, you know, I was, I was, I was, I was, you know, with the students out there. I have to, you know, go and, you know, get my belongings out there. So when, when I was going out there, they just came in and, you know, shoot me. Were you setting fire to the truck? Yeah, no, 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 no. I was, uh, I was with the students. Uh, some of the students, they, you know, they burned a fire. I mean, they burned the truck out there. So I have to go and get my wife out there, so they shot me. Just they came in and shot me. His immediate future is unclear, but he remains undaunted by the shooting, refusing to take off the blood-stained jacket he was wearing when shot. It was my blood. <laughs> Save this country. Corruption come to hand. When I see this, it's telling me that, you know, I've saved this country for my blood. In reality, though, the end of corruption is still a dream, and many Papua New Guineans feel their country still needs saving. to sit around and look for people to give us the answers. We, we are the answer. We have to stand up. And I for one and my other fellow students, we are willing to pay any sacrifice that is required to maintain the rule of law and without corruption. The country needs powerful institutions, uh, not powerful individuals. <laughs>